Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Emma and I wanted to make this video to thank you guys for a thousand subscribers. Whether you came to share my love for languages or to help me learn how to sew or for any reason at all, thanks for stopping by and spreading the good vibes. And so in honor of 1K, I wanted to do a Q&A video. But before we get into that, so you know how I've been studying Korean on and off for about three and a half years now and I've actually never been to Korea. Well, today I am packing for a trip to go to... to China. Who would have thought? Not me. As per filming this video, I had been studying Mandarin Chinese for about a month now and the opportunity to visit China arose as suddenly as the opportunity to learn Chinese. I had never actually been to China before and so I wasn't quite sure what to expect or how to navigate through China so my mom and I booked a tour along with my Mandarin class classmates. Our destination? Yunnan, a southwestern province in mainland China. Yun means cloud and Nan means south. So Yunnan means the colorful clouds of the south. We crossed the border from the Vietnamese city of Lao Cai into Yunnan with an entry and exit permit instead of a visa. The main difference is that these permits are much cheaper than visas, but you can only enter through one specific gate. Before, you'd only be able to enter about 30 kilometers into China with a permit, but as of recent, to encourage Vietnamese tourism in Yunnan to boost the local economy, the Chinese government has expanded this limit to as far as Kunming, which is about 400 kilometers into mainland China. And you can do that by going on tours like the one I'm on right now. We just crossed the border and there are tons of electric mopeds for renting. You can just get a scooter and then make your way around the city. At a pit stop in our journey and it's really peaceful you can hear a lot of the birds chirping everything here is just corn and mountains first question is where are you from xin chào cả nhà mình là người việt mình sinh ra và lớn lên tại việt nam và ngoài hai năm ở úc và hai năm ở lào thì hầu như là toàn bộ cuộc sống mình là ở việt nam mình có đi đại học ở mỹ thế rồi sau đấy mình cũng đã quay về việt nam để sinh sống this breeze is absolutely impeccable, top notch. <sighs> the first place we headed to was Ping Bian Miao Autonomous County, which basically is an area that has its own local government. And a lot of the times, these autonomous counties are also created for the country's ethnic minority groups. In this case, they are the Miao people. And Miao is actually an umbrella term for several ethnic groups. Question number two, what did I study? So I went to school for horticulture, which is basically the study of plants, whether that's organic agriculture or plants that you can eat or ornamental horticulture, which is plants that you can look at. So like plants in arboretums, in greenhouses. And we also studied a lot about soils and insects. And I remember for one of my final projects, I had to pin up 30 different types of insects with all their limbs and wings intact. Otherwise, I'd get points deducted. 
But that said, upon graduation, I haven't been using my degree and I am now an English tutor tutoring the IELTS. Honestly, the weather today is so nice. It feels straight out of a movie. You know what I mean? Another point that caught me by surprise was that this place, although very beautiful, is basically a ghost town. Apart from people taking care of the landscape and providing food or costume rentals for us tourists, and the occasional band of locals playing checkers, this place was practically deserted. This wasn't specific to Pingbian either. These underoccupied developments were an overarching theme during our Yunnan trip. Despite the incredible infrastructure and tall buildings everywhere, when the sun goes down and you look up at the apartment complexes, you realize that barely any of the lights come on. The reason being, in simple terms, in China, people view buying real estate to be a much safer way of investing than, say, the stock market. So of course, to fulfill this demand, a lot of real estate companies have bought land from the government to build these housing units for sale, but they kind of took it to the extreme. Unfortunately, these units have become less and less affordable over time. Coupled with China's rapidly aging population, especially after the pandemic, what's left are lots of cities and housing complexes that will remain unsold and underoccupied for quite some time in the future. So this is how many of them look like now. Beautiful, yet deserted. I think a lot of people have also asked me why I choose to only work part time. And it's because I have done the hustle life before, like school full time and 20 hours of a part time job, internships every summer back to back to back. And by the end of it, did I survive? Barely. But I ended up with a lot of health issues and it took me about a couple years after graduation to actually regain my balance again. And that is why I now have a work-life philosophy where I understand the way that my energy functions. It is better for me to work part-time than full-time. So instead of working full-time for 30 years, 60 years part-time, would probably be more suitable for me. Yo, you guys check this out. Today's location is a little higher in elevation, we're a little bit closer to the sun. This area boasts of having a climate similar to that of Europe, so it's cool, it's dry, it's breezy, but you also get sunburn that much more quickly as well. Another overarching theme I found was that with a lot of the tourist attractions here, they're mostly provided in Mandarin Chinese, which is great for domestic travelers 
but not so much for foreign travelers like myself who have not yet really studied the Mandarin language. I really wish that I had access to this information about like the history and tales behind these tourist attractions as it would have added a whole nother layer of depth to my experience. There's so many spider webs here. <laughs> here are my Gen Z students, say hi. Hello. <laughs> I am also Gen Z, by the way. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look weird. You look hey. fine. Okay. Where are we? I don't know. Do you know where we are? In the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere, really? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> My family and I moved to Australia for two years when I was five for my dad's job. And I remember at that point I knew exactly zero English. So my parents put me in an English introductory course for about a year. And after that one year from basically knowing zero English, somehow my teachers were able to train me to go into mainstream and learn English with the rest of the Aussie kids. But I would say one of the things that probably was a defining factor in my English even after we left Australia after two years was that when we were in Australia, my mom made sure that we took great advantage of the local libraries. Every other week, my mom would take my brother and I to the library to borrow like 30 titles of books or movies. And then she would read them to us every single night and really helped us kindle our love for reading, which I think is how my English has been able to maintain and develop itself through my love for reading books that my mom cultured at a very young age. So thank you, mom. It was in my plan to learn Chinese at some point, but I didn't expect it to be this year, but an opportunity arose that I couldn't turn down to be taught by a very good Mandarin teacher so here we are, learning Chinese this time around. I think I am somewhat late now. I have to go run and catch my ride back to the hotel for tonight. Goodbye, Chinese London. See you later. As much as I enjoyed the outdoor scenery, what I was really here for was to get more into the nitty gritty, to get a better glimpse of what local life was like. And what better way to explore that than through the night markets. Okay, let's go. Hello, we at the night market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you going to buy? I don't know, I'm looking for some food. Food, yeah, me Food, too. but I don't, I don't see no food, I just see a dog. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, we give it one, we give it one. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> So we are at a night market and there are finally people around here and it doesn't feel like a ghost town anymore. Uh, 
陪看看的可。Fifty. Wait. Why you know exactly the amount of words? I know. Maybe we know more. I'm not sure, but I think we know about fifty characters. There's a lot of roasted everything around here. Just lots of roasted marinated meat. Yeah. Okay. Mẹ cho chặt cay đặc biệt cái thịt này phải ăn cay một chút mới ngon. Cậu nghe là lát chưa? Nó cho ít chưa? Oh, that's spicy. I'm doing everywhere. Okay,可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。可以。
Anyways, at the moment, I'm pretty satisfied with the languages right now, and I don't plan on studying anything else in the near future, but that's just my thoughts right now. Some of my favorite YouTubers are probably Natasha Ocean, her fitness, mindset, and lifestyle content, as well as Michelle Kare, who is YouTube's daredevil. Also, Simin Ng for her cinematography and storytelling, as well as Yongguk Namja and Jolly for their 
good, good vibes. That show is just pure sunshine. I swear to God. It is now some days later and I'm still munching off of these sweet dried persimmons. I have a couple questions from my post. Hello Emma, you have a reflective process in learning a language. Well done. I am from New Zealand. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. I think you have picked up on the fact that I do a decent amount of reflection, whether that's in my work, um, in my language learning, and I think being reflective has been crucial for me to move forwards in the direction that I want to progress in. As a person, as a piece of existence on this planet for a short amount of time. Next question. Hi Emma, I just saw your language learning video and I am mind blown by the amount of clarity and structure you have. I am learning intermediate German right now and this is exactly what I needed. You have no idea how many Reddit, Reddit, Reddit Reddit threads I have explored for something like this. I am a fan. Thank you so much. I am really I'm very moved that these tips and approaches have been so useful to you. And I will say that where I am now is a product of a lot of people's work. A lot of my teachers, my family, my friends have shaped where I am today. So I am very much a product of all of that and the internet as well. So I am very grateful for this opportunity to have this platform to contribute just a little bit back to the internet where I have already reaped a lot from. Moving on to my question. How do you divide your time between the different activities like reading, course book, and podcasts? I am truly very impressed by how structured your brain is. If you ever come to India, just let this girly know. To be honest, my brain is not as structured as you may think it is. I'm a right-brained girly, which means that I'm a visual learner, an auditory learner, and not so much a logical learner. And it takes me a while to actually structure things together in something that's like comprehensive, something approachable and isn't all over the place. But I'm honored that you do think that way. I probably divide my time to equal thirds between the course books, podcasts, and reading exercises. For each big exercise, there are like small exercises underneath it. I just know that these are all the tasks that I want to complete this week. And I just pick whatever I feel like that day. And if I don't complete it in a week, that's fine too. I'm always tweaking this routine a little bit to fit my schedule that week. However, this past month, because I've been focusing a little bit more on Chinese and Korean has been more so put to the side of my focus, 
I've returned to Korean like a month and a half after and I realized that my ability to guess the meaning of new words in context has improved a lot. Even though I haven't exposed myself to a lot of Korean within the past month compared to the months before, which I thought was really interesting. I was talking to a couple other people recently and we kind of found a, whatchamacallit, a similarity where once you take a little break from a certain language and come back to it later, somehow your ability improves. And I think of it as like, you know, if you're making like a pot of soup, good hearty pumpkin soup, at first you need to boil everything on high heat, right? When you're putting all your ingredients and whatnot. And that's similar to having a lot of input, a lot of active learning at the beginning stages of your language learning. However, to get the best results or the best flavor out of your soup, it is always recommended to simmer your soup at low heat for a longer amount of time. And although the second part takes longer, your end result or your soup becomes much richer and deeper in flavor. And I think that might just be the case for language learning as well. So I'd say if anyone is overwhelmed or feels like they need a little break from learning a certain language, please take it. It may be more useful to your language progression than you might think. Given this in mind, I think I will incorporate more active breaks into my Korean learning. You know, switch things up in my brain and see what the simmering has done. Anyways, that's all for this video. Again, you guys, thank you so much for a hundred a hundred a thousand subscribers i am very grateful that you guys chose to come by and stick around and share this journey with me as i navigate through my life and share parts of it with you so i will go ahead and finish off this lovely persimmon and i hope you guys will find more sweetness in your life like this as well you guys have a great week and i'll see you very soon bye <laughs> It was your breakfast, by the way, and it's like 12. <laughs>